beep, 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 beep. And another queen might go beep, 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 beep. And that means I'm gonna find you and kill you. They can actually respond to a rival queen from within the queen cell. If you're confined to a queen cell, you're an easy shot for the rival queen that's walking around with a stinger. Now there's no way I'm gonna open up this hive because if I do, I could potentially kill my queen. This can be a big problem. And sometimes beekeepers will tell me they went into their hive, they killed their queen. Let me explain this to you. Hey everybody, David Burns here with you today. I'm gonna to talk to you about the queen development. We're gonna talk about the stages. A lot of you are asking me questions. When do I go back into my hive? and find out if my queen is mated, is she laying eggs, because maybe you made a split, maybe your hive swarmed. For some reason, your hive is raising a new queen. Maybe they superseded her, and you wanna find out, how long do I wait to find out if she's laying eggs, because if I wait too long, they're gonna have laying workers. Oh gosh, I don't want that, right? So this is gonna be a great video, and I'm gonna teach you guys how to know when you can go back in safely and see how your queen's doing. So let's talk about queen development cycle. Now a queen from the time the egg is laid all the way until she emerges is 16 days, 15.5 to 16 days. For a worker, it's 21 days. For a drone, the male bee, it's 24 days. So the queen's a lot faster in emerging after the egg is laid. Now let's talk about the continued cycle. I have a lot more to say about the queen developmental stages that's gonna help you so much. Before I continue on, let me encourage you to please subscribe and please give me a thumbs up the like button down below it will help this video so much that's one way for you to do me a great favor now let's get right back into the queen developmental stages because it's an egg from day one zero to day three roughly day three it becomes a larvae the queen larvae remains a larvae uh, until day seven. So day three, four, five, six, seven, it's gonna be a larvae. That's why you look at frames and you're like, oh my gosh, I see a queen cup. Is there anything in it? And you look and there's a larvae in there. They're feeding it royal jelly. Now it's a queen cell. And so it's gonna be viewable to you from about day four till about day seven. Day seven, they cap over the queen cell. She's in there, she begins to pupate. She's a pupa from about day eight until about day 16, when she finally emerges as an adult queen. So now let's talk about this hive. This hive was featured on a live stream. A few weeks ago, we had a live stream where we actually opened this hive up. I was inspecting it live. You could ask me questions. That's a hoot. You can still view that. But this coming week, we're gonna be back in the same hive, pulling out some honey supers. And the one live stream we had last week, we gave a 50% discount on our online courses for one hour that we only announced on our live stream. So live stream happens and you can have some great discounts on our live stream because this coming live stream on June the 1st, we're giving away an online course free for a certain time period. So you'll only know about it on the live stream. So be sure and watch the live stream Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Time coming up June the 1st. So this hive we looked at and when we were live streaming, I said, oh my gosh, look at all the queen cells. Ah, there's larvae in them, they're developing, they're gonna swarm. So the next day I went out during a very rainy, stormy day, and I made a video for you guys, it's posted, you can watch it, where we actually, I took the queen out, I marked her, put her in a five frame nuke, took off with her, made a split. And that way I saved them from swarming because they have to raise their own queen. Now, that was on May the 19th that I did, I did that, uh, maybe around that time. So we can actually use the developmental cycle of the queen to know how old this queen that's developing is. So let's sit through the math, I've already told you. Let's pick a date and let's say they started on May the 19th raising a queen. So now we can project it out and we can actually see where we're gonna be at if they started with a two day old larvae is what I'm suspecting. On day 19th, they said, we're queenless. So they found a two day old larvae. They started feeding it rolled jelly past day three when they normally start feeding uh, worker bees, a mixture of, of uh, worker brood. They kept feeding her royal jelly, which turned her, changed her into a queen. Now today is actually May the 30th. That puts us at about day 13. So that means that we're three days away from the queen emerging. If I go in there, like I said at the beginning of the broadcast today, if I go in there now and open this hive up and start manipulating frames, 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 I just had a, a voice change. I'm, I'm going through puberty at, a, at an old age, I guess. But if I go in there now, separate the frames, what happens is a queen cell can 
it's actually hanging adjacent to the actual frame, the actual comb. It's, sometimes it's attached to it, but usually it's hanging uh, perpendicular to the actual comb itself. That means it's usually touching, sometimes attached to the frame next to it. So when you begin pulling up frames or sliding frames apart, guess what you can easily do? You can easily tear the queen cell open. And when you do that, it's over. Why is it over? There's no eggs in it. There's no queen to lay eggs. There's no young larvae to raise a, raise a queen from. So if I go in there now and accidentally, because it's so full of bees, kill my queen cell by tearing it open, tearing it apart, then what's gonna happen is I have to introduce a new queen that I could buy, or in my case, raise another one to put in there. I do have some mating nooks where I could pull those queens over here, but for you that may not have be raising your own queens, you're gonna have to buy a queen and put it in there. So that's why I'm trying to tell you guys this developmental cycle. If you know it, if you memorize it, if you just look at it right here and you understand the life cycle of the developing queen, you can be better at knowing when to stay out of the hive because a lot of you feel like, I gotta go in there and check. It's about, you know, it's been a week since uh, I took the queen away, is a queen in there? I wanna make sure I gotta go find the virgin queen. That's too soon. A week she's still in a cell. You're gonna, you're gonna kill, you're gonna break open the cell. You gotta, you gotta wait. Look, there's no reason to go in a hive and look for a virgin queen. They're hard to find. Their abdomen is not as stretched out, is not as impregnated with eggs yet. And she's a runner. She's running everywhere. She could be on a mating flight. So many people call me and say, it's been two or three weeks. I don't see my queen. I don't see a virgin queen. You know what? She's probably a virgin queen on a mating flight. Did you inspect it between 11 and 4? That's when they go out on a mating flight. Wait until about 6 o'clock at night when they're back and you can see if she's made it. But let me take you through the rest of the exciting venture of a queen. On day 16, when she, um, when she emerges, what does she do? Does she leave immediately on a mating flight? Absolutely not. She's probably gonna hang out in the hive for about a week. The first thing she does when she emerges is she tunes up her listening skills because she wants to seek out a rival queen. That's right, they could raise more than one queen for insurance purposes. And so they use a piping noise that sounds like this. <clears throat> Let me clear my voice. Meep, beep, beep, beep. And another queen might go meep, 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 meep. And that means I'm gonna find you and kill you. Do you know that a queen can pipe even in a cell? Yeah, after about day 13 or 14, 15 maybe, they kind of come to life while they're still in the cell because they have to eat their way out, right? They can actually respond to a rival queen from within the queen cell. They can sit there and bop, 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 bop. And guess what happens? If you're confined to a queen cell, you're an easy shot for the rival queen that's walking around with a stinger. Queens don't, I've never been stung by a queen. I've handled thousands. Queens use their stinger, which is not as barbed as a worker stinger, to actually pierce through a rival queen in the cell and kill her. Oh, it's, you won't believe what's going on in there. Let's listen. It's like a war zone. I mean, it's sniper shots being taken at rival queens in there. So that's what she does first few days when she's out. She tries to hunt down and kill any competitor queens in the hive. Now you see this more often in swarm cells, not so much in supersedures because sometimes you only have one supersedure cell. Another reason she doesn't take a mating flight immediately is because her wings aren't hard enough to fly. They're still kind of developing, uh, getting harder you might say. So she's not ready to take a flight until about another week. So she's gonna walk around in there as a virgin. So as a virgin queen, she's walking around and really nobody cares, the other bees don't care. And so she'll just kind of fly out and around her hive that week, kind of learning her orientation, kind of learning where she's at, orientation flights for about a week before she's gonna take off on a mating flight. Now on or around about 22 days after the egg was laid, the queen will take her mating flight. Now she's gonna fly further away than her half brothers can follow her. Uh, some people say, you mean her sons? She's a virgin queen, she doesn't have any sons. Those are her half brothers. She's gonna fly far enough away where the drone congregation where she finds other drones, they're not interbreeding uh, with her from her own half brother drones here, you see. So she flies further away. 
we don't really know how she finds those drone congregation areas. She seems to leave with some other uh, squadrons of scout bees that maybe know where they're at. They take, maybe the scout bees take her there or something, but she knows where to go to get mated by drones that aren't from her own hive. On or around day 22, she's gone for about 17 uh, minutes roughly, and she'll mate with over 20 drones, a few seconds on each drone mating with her. And once she's fully mated with 20 to 40 drones, she flies back into the hive with the last drone genitalia still in her abdomen, and that's called a mating sign. Now, sometimes when this queen will take her virgin mating flight, her nuptial flight it's called, Actually, the bees kind of get a little concerned and a little charged up. They will actually swarm with her, but she goes on to mate. And now this big, well, it's not really always big, but the swarm actually can exist outside the hive. Usually they go back in when they realize there's no queen, but you can actually have these virgin swarms happen when a virgin goes out on a mating flight. Now, if you happen to catch all this, you're watching it, you're, you know what you look for. Once she takes out mating flight, you'll see a lot of bees on the entrance spraying Nasanoff gland located in the rear part of their abdomen. They'll spray this Nasanoff gland up in the air and it's a scent to help guide mama home. They're all kind of worried. Oh, will she make it? Will she be eaten by a dragonfly or a bird? Will she get trapped by a thunderstorm, a pop-up thunderstorm? Is she gonna make it? They're kind of worried. It's 17 minutes of real intense worry because without mama coming back, the hive knows they're doomed. And that, that's crazy, isn't it? You need to know this developmental sequence of your queen so that you can understand when to start looking for eggs and know it's safe to look for eggs. So after this day 22, when she goes out on a mating flight, she may take one mating flight and that would be plenty. She has the capability of going out on one or two more mating flights if she so chooses. Usually one is sufficient and all they do. Now, once she's mated, all the sperm from the 20 or 30 or 40 drones that she mated with gets stored in her organ called a spermatheca for her entire lifetime. So we feel that most queens don't live past three or four, maybe five years at the most. And so she's able to lay or fertilize these eggs that she's laying with the stored sperm from the drones. She never has to mate again. She'll never leave the hive again unless they choose to swarm next year, she will be the mama that goes out on the swarm. The older queen that's proven herself to be a layer uh, will go out in the swarm while the hive raises virgin queens like we're talking about today. That brings us on to about day 29. Maybe a week or so after she's mated, she'll begin laying pretty consistently. So, it's gonna take 30 days, 30 days from the time they take an egg and they raise a queen and she gets mated and starts laying 30 days before you're really gonna see eggs. Now, this is not an exact science. It can be off by a day or two, of course, but in general, so you have to be patient. And a lot of times people tell me, David, I wanna go see if my queen's laying yet. It's been 30 days. You know what? Wait another week, you'll see larvae easier to see because a newly mated queen lays kind of sporadically. And sometimes what people don't realize is a newly mated queen that starts laying can actually lay a couple of eggs in a cell and people panic and think they have a laying worker. It's not on the walls and it's not multiple, but she can go back and hit the same spot with another egg. And so you may have two eggs. Well, eventually the other workers just cull one out and there's one in there. So don't be panicky if your queen starts laying and you start seeing more than one egg in a cell, a brand new queen that's just made it can certainly probably do that for a few days. But once she's mated, once she has her ov ovaries or ovaries fill up with eggs, she'll start laying very consistently. So if you wait about 45 days after that egg was laid, then you can know when to safely go in here. So for me, today's uh, May the 30th. I'm not going to go in there because it's going to be three or four days before my queen even emerges. And after that, it's going to be a week before she takes a mating flight. After that, maybe another week before I see eggs, I'll keep you posted. I'm gonna try to stay out just a little while and let that queen mature. Again, if I go in there now, I'm so afraid I'm gonna break open that queen cell. I'd rather get the genetics from the queen I took out by not having to introduce a new one. I want her genetics from her mother because this hive 
rocks people at rocks. Have you ever heard the queen developmental stages explained with this much accuracy and excitement? <laughs> well, I hope I've helped you out. By the way, remember, live stream on Thursday night, giving a class away for a small window of time. You've got to be on the live stream to hear that announcement. We'll tell you where to go and how to take advantage of that. It's going to be awesome. It's a class that most of you have probably not taken. So let's be sure and tune into that. Be sure and watch the video where I actually took the queen out, marked her, and put her in a five-frame nuke on a rainy day. That video is right here. I'll see you over there.